We good? Yep. We're on. We're on. We're on. <laughs> We're on. I'm adjusting my necklace. Hi, everybody. It's Kate Richburg from beadshop.com. And it's Friday. So you know what that means. It's free tip, free tip Friday today. And as promised on our Facebook Live um, broadcast from this past Wednesday, I promised we'd talk about thread. And we are. We're going to talk about the many moods of thread today on our little... Um, moments together today on Friday. But first I wanted to share something because it's the today is June 30th. It's the end of June and here in the US we are gearing up to celebrate one of our big summer holidays which is 4th of July. Um, and we had, if you guys remember from last Wednesday, we kind of had some comments going back and forth about some 4th of July projects and you know colors for the 4th are traditionally red, white, and blue. So, um, Deb, it was Deb, and who else was chatting? Gracie, do you Deb remember? Ginger? Um, Ginger. Ginger, yeah. Thanks, Ginger. Brandon. Um, Deb and Ginger were talking about doing some projects for 4th of July, so I thought it'd be really timely. I'm going to show it again next week, but I thought since we were before the 4th, um, I'd share this with you just real quick. She said, hi Kate, I just wanted to send a quick picture of my creation. She used as her inspiration Tahoe and she added color leather, colored leather and voila. Um, and I'm gonna, Kate, yeah. Ginger said me in all caps. Ginger, you're there. <laughs> so Ginger, I wanna see your um, creation too so we can compare and contrast. So I've got D's right here. She said, or Deb's rather. She said, just pretend that it's truly finished. Um, she just wanted to share it um, before the 4th of July holiday. So um, I'm going to show you guys. I pulled it up on it's my really, computer. Really cute. It's super cute. And I'm going to turn it around so, Gracie, you, you guys We're can gonna see show it all again this. On, we'll show Wednesday. it again. Can you guys see that oh, okay? Yeah. But look at how she used, like, the little uh, the, the sliders. Um, all this cool stuff and the red, white, and blue leather to kind of make a very patriotic and fun and seasonable, seasonal, uh, seasonal Debbie's piece. On. Deb, hey. hi Deb, thanks it's so beautiful. much. It really looks fantastic. So we'll share it again next week and Janice will put the ingredients in the episode notes. But I just wanted to share it with you guys um, because Deb, you took the time to send it over this morning. So that's awesome. So great, great job. And it's good that you guys are being uh, creative uh, for our uh, upcoming weekend holiday. So, uh, but you guys, let's start talking about thread. We've got some people out there, Gracie oh Grace. Oh my gosh, so many people, and a lot of people wishing us a happy fourth. Thank you, happy fourth, you guys. Just and saying hello and good morning. Oh, good morning. Well, great, it's great to have everybody here. Well, I'm gonna come around on the other side of the table because I've yes. got a whole bunch of stuff laid out, and I'm gonna start um, by sharing an inspiration source of mine. Are people asking what this is? I'll share, show you guys. This was a piece, this was based on our Born Yesterday project, and I made this as my holiday necklace. It was my Christmas necklace this year. And it's our, um, this is one of our vintage pine, uh, vintage finds, uh, the called pie piece. And then this is our cranberry, um, rounds yeah. yeah 10 millimeter rounds and then i just used our little old cameroon beads here i'm zooming in so just yeah, hold it i'll hold it right there and this is done with regular ceylon and i think i used um i think i used antique gold maybe for this um but i matched it to kind of the color of the centerpiece the pie and I really love it. It's based again on our Born Yesterday project. And you can see I just did a few um, macrames in the middle. I've got a new um, kind of board take, uh, another take on Born Yesterday that I'm working on now. So you guys will see that soon. But it's a fun piece. Can I show? Yeah. Can I show you the one that I made with the cold pie? The oh, will you bring you? it? Will you it bring it out? Mom, right. And it's perfect for our thread day, Grace. Yeah, Gracie. Um, makes a lot of great jewelry as well and we're going to be talking a little bit more with Grace when she's on in a couple of weeks for our um, it's a mall. Uh, it's our broadcast culture. we're doing together our cross cultures piece but Grace used that same called pie 
piece and she based this she did this when we were doing our malas and you can see she's used some leather there and she's used kind of this this piece from her stash that she had which is a little bit of a fancier mala bead but can you guys see how the thread and this leads us right into our conversation the thread that grace chose she chose to have a thread that matched the piece more than contrasted with it right so each of these little knots that she did with the mala it really works like uh, just a little uh, seed bead almost or a spacer bead and it's really nice Gracie strung this again like our malas so it's endless there's no clasp um, and it's really beautiful Grace thank you so much for sharing yeah it. of course thanks for letting me and they actually want to see your clasp sure I'll show you the clasp you guys this is just if you go to our Facebook live broadcast I think it was before the end of last year if you go to our Facebook live page and you go to our, what did we call it? Intuition, I think, mm -hmm. was the name of the project. It's very similar to this. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can see, here's the clasp. And all I did was I used one of our, I think, swirl buttons. I think that this one is. Let me undo it for you so you can see. I just did a simple macrame loop ending underneath this old Cameroon and see this macrame, it's just macrame in. So it's a simple, the simplest button and loop clasp you can do. Um, I really, really love this. And it was a fun thing to do. I wore it uh, for my holiday. I had a kind of a chic black dress <laughs> that I wore this with, so um, so I loved it. And right before the broadcast, I looked at Grace and I went, Gracie, I'm not wearing a necklace. So I ran over to my desk and grabbed it off my lamp where I keep it hanging so I could look at it. And I just threw it on. So, all right, well, let's get started and look at some thread, okay? All right. And I want to share when I, getting started, this morning we were talking a lot about um, kind of inspiration and we're having a bead day today, so we're going to be working on some projects here this afternoon at beadshop.com. But we've talked a lot about color and color inspiration, and this is kind of, kind of flow into what I'm talking about here. But I brought one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite book inspirations here. This is, um, Gracie, show me how, and you guys, I'm still, we're still kind of playing I'm around with the camera me. that way. Okay, perfect. This is um, a book out of my collection, and it's on Tony Duquette. And Tony Duquette was um, an American designer. He was kind of like a, um, um, a movie designer. He designed jewelry. He did all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and um, I really, really love his style. So I just wanted to share this with you. This is somewhere uh, where I get some of my color inspiration. And you can see right here, here's the book cover. And here's <laughs> some of the pieces that I used. You can see I almost palleted that right from the cover. From the cover. And it's, you know, you can look for it online. There may be some of his photos and stuff online. But I want to show, I was showing Gracie and the gang earlier. This is a black and white page. Let's get to a color page. Um, of some of his, there we go, some of his interiors. Can you guys see that? How really, like, you know, the beautiful oranges and stuff like that that's going on. He did wonderful interiors and costumes and uh, things for the, I don't know, the San Francisco Ballet, all kinds of cool stuff. But this really is uh, one of my color inspirations when I want to kind of get some interesting color in my pieces. Look at this one. He painted like manzanita twigs and stuff. He painted them orange to look like coral. And he had kind of this kind of Asian influence with all these pagodas that he did. So it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. So I wanted to share um, this book, uh, one of my color inspirations that I have um, with you. So let me put this aside. Grace, I'm going to hand this giant tome to you. Are we going to reference and, it later? No, I don't think so. I think we're good with it. I'm going to try and move our camera a little bit, you guys. Thanks for bearing with me. And I'm going to pull it up just a little bit. I'm learning to kind of work all of this on my own if I need to. So kind of bear with me here as we're looking at stuff. So let me, actually I don't want to go that far yet. I want to go over here. So let me do this. 
We've got questions so far. We're doing all right, you guys. I'm going to move this oh, over. Well, there was a question from earlier. The beads that I used in mine actually mm -hmm. were from childhood and are robe lace. Oh, robe lace, right. Both an 8mm. Let's see if I can get this so you guys can see what's going on thread-wise. I'm totally out of the shot. It's okay. You're in it now. Am oh, I? Oh, no, you're not. No. Hang on, you guys. I'm going to try and get my thread right in here. Bear with me. There we go. I like the looks of that. I'm going to move this closer, and I'm going to zoom in on my threads. <laughs> there we go. How's that looking, Grace? Can we if see that? A bit of a delay, oh, okay. Not too bad. I'll move it over just a little bit more, maybe. There we go. There we go. Sue, I love 1950s wallpaper samples. I love that idea. I love it. All right. So what I've got here, you guys, is I've got three strands of our Chinese knotting cord. Um, I also have some of, let me make this a little bit bigger. I've got some Hana. I've got some Kao. And I've got some Ceylon right here. And I'll put the Ceylon over here on this side. There we go. Okay, moving this around, moving this over so you guys can see everything. Okay, so these are, look, you can even see my phone in the shot. How exciting. I'll move it over. There we go. <laughs> um, so these are kind of our three go-to threads that we use all the time here at beadshop.com, right? We use our Chinese knotting cord for things like our Bollywood project or for some of our wrap bracelets, for our herringbone bracelets, we use those too, right? We use Ceylon for just, I don't know, everything, right? The necklace that I'm wearing, this born yesterday, we use it for our wrap bracelets, we use it to ladder with. We also use um, our smaller threads, our Hana and our Kao, and we use these for looming and stuff like that, okay? But, uh, so these are kind of the three threads that I'm going to show or talk about today. Um, I have some scratch paper. I think it's under my necklace, under your necklace over there. So the way that you want to think about threads for your projects, can you guys see this here? Threads. The Kao and the Hana are what I call flat threads, okay, or kind of bonded threads. So all of the threads or the fibers in the Kao and the Hana, and this is true for things like Eslon or, um, you know, Nymo, things like that, right? These are threads that we traditionally call our looming threads, right? And so these guys are flat, not twisted. So we use these for things like when we ladder, when we need, when we're using beads that are real small, say like four millimeter beads or small seed beads, where the hole is pretty tiny, right? And we need to use, I always use this strand doubled. And yeah, Ginger, they do still make Eslon. We carry it um, in some color Mix some different color mixes, right? Yeah, we carry right. it. Yeah. Do you want to grab one of yeah. those tubes just so we can see it, Gracie? So the way that I use this um, this Kao and this Hana, I usually use it. I'm going to come out a little bit so you guys can see. Um, I use it usually doubled. And I'll usually double it like over like a seed bead needle maybe, right? Or if I'm laddering. Um, and yeah, you know, tough cord, we should, we should not exclude tough cord today. Gracie, will you get me yeah, a tough, just so we have it perfect. Um, and I'll show you these colors real quick. This is, we've got these different color mixes in Eslon. Can you see how that says Eslon? And they're the, the different colors. If you go under our skinny thread collection, that's where you'll find them. And look at, there's every color you're ever, ever going to need. Perfect. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. So with the skinny thread, here's my single strand of, I just arbitrarily chose Hana, and I string it through whatever needle I'm using, either a collapsible eye, like this one, a flexible eye, which is a smaller um, wire needle, or a seed bead needle, 
right? Like a size 10 or a size 12, like Emily was using um, this week for the spiral rope. So when, let's say that I'm looming or something like that with these, with looming, usually I use it in a single strand. If I'm laddering with it, I'll usually use it in a double strand. But one of the things that I find with this thread, I'm gonna push these out of the way so you guys can really see this. See how it's a little unruly. Can you see that? One of the ways I came this flat thread is good old beeswax. And I'll slide my thread, I'll grab my thread, and I'll just give it a few passes through the beeswax. And I saw a comment earlier, oh my gosh, K.O. is so slippery. Well, it is, but just a few passes of wax over the thread. Let me make this all nice and even here. And can you see how the K.O. thread is now laying, it's not like super curly anymore. It's just tamed and ready to go. I wax my K.O., my skinny threads, all the time, okay? And can you see how it just doubled over? I don't know if, I'm gonna see if I can get in really, really tight here so you guys can see this. How does that look on there, Gracie? It'll be it a little like bit a of a delay, yeah. so we'll see how that looks, if we can get it nice and tight there for you. Um, but you can see, yeah, that's not bad. You can see that it's fairly, oh, oh, even better. Look at that, not bad. Maybe I'll come out just a little bit, a real little tight. Yes, Kimberly Crawford, you are the boss of your thread. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, you know my motto. So you can see it doubles over nicely and gives us a fairly thick and durable. This is a, a really durable thread, um, and especially since it's doubled. Now, let's say that you wanted to use it for, I don't know, like a stringing project um, stuff like that. Let's take a look. I have doubled over three strands. Can you see how those are three? One, two, three, doubled over on my needle. And see how that also gives me kind of a nice, thick thread. Now I could definitely, I could definitely string with this. I could tie, I could knot it, you know. I could do a lot with this multiple strand um, we thread. We have a question about how mm -hmm. often you apply your wax. I apply wax only once. Okay, at the beginning. Right? At the beginning. Unless, you know, like Emily was saying the other day when we were doing our seed bead work, this is the place where these skinny threads right at the eye of the needle where they start to shred. So I might move my eye of the needle over, wow. re-pull it like this, and then maybe give it a little re-waxing nice. just at the top just to hold everything together like that you could do that too so I would experiment with your skinny threads with your KO your HANA your Eslon and use multiple strands of those threads um, and you can see like the knot I mean it's not amazing but it's also a good option um, for thread because what you could or for stringing because what you could also do is you could have that little knot here then you could you know, separate your strands and you could do like a tiny little float with tiny mm -hmm. little seed beads or tiny little, I don't know, um, little gemstones like or something it. like that. So, you know, don't, don't discount this. Oh, Gracie, that's a nice project to show. This is a, what's this one called? This one's actually just like a micro float. A micro float. This is one that Janice that. made a while back, but it really illustrates how you could do something like that. See how tiny these little threads are here? This is actually done with micro Ceylon, but you could also do it with the skinny Hana or Keo. And see, with those really tiny semi-precious beads, um, they look really, really nice. So you could totally do something, get away with doing something like that with this Hana. Oh, thank you. There we go, you can see it nice and tight. Okay, so, um, those are really fun. So that's the Hana and the Kao. So I use it, again, looming, um, and I also use it for, uh, for laddering when I have small, uh, small beads. I'm going to adjust the camera over just 
a yes. little bit this way. Yes. How do we like that view? Even better, I think. There we go. Look at that. Thanks, you guys, for hanging in. We're still learning our fancy pants camera, so thanks for, for hanging in there with me. Now let's talk about thread that's plied, okay? Things like Ceylon, okay? Um, Ceylon, tough cord, also plied. Let me pull this little tough cord right out of here. Stretch? All thread stretches some, okay. just because it's thread. Okay. But the skinny threads don't stretch much especially because they're flat like this. There's mm -hmm. nothing to really pull, more pull or unfurl from. But these, what I call applied thread, like this tough cord and this Ceylon. This is a tough number one and this is regular Ceylon right here, so they're a little bit thicker. Let me get a little closer in so you guys can see. Applied thread is when you have a thread like this and it's plied made up of multiple strands of thread okay like so does that make sense right and the plies fill in and that's what makes your nice round thread okay like that okay so it's really apparent like if you have yarn and you take like your yarn apart, you would see that the little twist would come here and then you'd have the little plies that are out like that. Okay, so applied thread I find um, is a little more durable because it's many threads making up the one. And see how when I unfurl it here, you can see these little plies that come apart. Let me open it up with my pencil. There we go. You see that? So you could use, and things like wax linen, our Irish wax linen, it's also plied like this. So the more plies the thread has, this has three plies and they're fairly thick. This is a pretty strong thread, okay? The tough cord, I think the tough cord must have three plies too. Let's see what it looks like. Can I unfurl the end? The tough cord, the thing, the main thing about the difference between the tough cord, I think, and the Ceylon is this tough cord has been super bonded. So see how it was really easy for me to unfurl that Ceylon? This tough cord is not so easy for me to unfurl. And so it's bonded pretty tightly, plied together pretty tightly. Consequently, it's a little more buoyant right? It has a little more, it's a little more wiry feeling to me. A lot of questions I get from students are, well, Kate, tough cord or Ceylon, tough cord or Ceylon. You know, uh, it's six of one, half dozen of the other, really. You know, sometimes if I'm near a spool of tough cord and maybe I feel like I don't want to ladder with a needle and I just want to throw things right on the cord, I'll use tough cord. You know, if I want something maybe that has a color that tough cord doesn't have, I'll go to Ceylon. What do you think, Grace? Well, Is that kind of your same? It was funny when I first came on, um, <coughs> we had an employee who said that every time she used Ceylon, it would unfurl. Mm -hmm. So she swore by tough cord. Mm -hmm. For me, it's the same thing. It's I, I think with tough, you don't need a needle so much, mm -hmm. but... Um, like you said, color choices. Are yeah, different. color choices. And we just had a quick question from Ginger. Um, does it fray as much? They both, I don't have issues with fraying either. Um, with either of them, really. I think it's the way you, you use mm -hmm. your um, threads. That make it fray. That make it fray. Yeah, exactly. But not inherently in the mm -hmm. cords themselves. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk quickly, we're kind of getting towards our 11 o'clock hour, but I wanted to share um, a few more things with you because I want to talk color, okay, um, and some of our projects. I also wanted to share with you this Chinese knotting cord. Yeah, the heavier weight. So um, let me um, refer you guys on our project page on beadshop.com. If you go to projects and you scroll down, you're going to see a little box that's called Stitchinary. The Stitchinary was a labor of love created by Brittany Rooney, 
Ron, Ron, Brittany, Ron, <laughs> yeah, yeah, ketchup. Yeah, sorry, Brittany, I just mangled your name because I'm thinking about your wonderful stitchinary. Um, what Brittany did was she compiled all of our threads and knotted them and wrote about them. And so it's a really great reference from like A to Z of all the threads we carry. So run, don't walk to the stitchinary, and you'll really see um, a lot of info there. Also, Janice's main tricks to laddering handout, oh my gosh, you guys, it's like a thesis on thread. So I would download both of those, um, download them in a PDF and put them on your e-reader, and you will have everything you need to know about thread, okay? Which also, so, uh huh. Sorry, really quick. Yeah. Cynthia asks if it comes in heavier weights, and everything we carry, I think, with the exception of the regular Ceylon, is the heaviest weight. Correct. So the yeah. cord comes in heavier weight sizes, and so does the Chinese knotting cord. Chinese knotting cord, yeah. Like you can see, I'm holding up three of the Chinese knotting cords here. This is the 0.4 millimeter here, this, this one. The one in the middle is the 0.5, which is really our most popular size. This is, if you're wondering which CKC should I get, Kate? Um, the 0.5 is the one that we use in most of our projects. But if you do want something a little bit heavier, like the necklace that I'm wearing, I could have totally done this in the 8 millimeter Chinese knotting cord because the holes in my round beads were pretty big. Mm. So I totally could have used that. Yep. Okay, we had a question. Uh huh. So it's about the micro, fine, and the regular weight. They're all mm -hmm. plied. They are all plied. They are all plied, but I think in our skinny thread, we either have both the fine and the micro, or just the micro. Okay. Just to clarify. Yeah. I don't remember. And we're calling it micro. skinny thread because it's you skinny use, thread. You can use it with smaller whole beads. Yeah. And they're kind of interchangeable. Right. Like, I've loomed with the micro Ceylon. I've done that. I've used that for looming. And mm -hmm. I'm going to show you a little yeah, sneak preview right. of a project that I'm working on where I use the Chinese knotting cord for looming. But the CKC here, or Chinese, or not Chinese knotting cord for looming, the Ceylon for looming. Um, the Chinese knotting cord I have here, though, you could also, you could ladder with this if you wanted the Chinese knotting cord look around the edges of your laddering. Um, I always advise when people are like, well, you know, what thread should I use? Get yourself a thread library mm -hmm. so you have some different threads that you can work with and experiment mm -hmm. and try it out because you'll really find what works for you. I had not used much Chinese knotting cord before I came back on board here at beadshop.com and I love it. I want to do some more macrame with it. I love how our Bollywood projects look with it. I love it, love it. Okay, so let's take a look now at, I, I want to talk about thread and color, okay? So let me wipe this away. Where's my sous chef, <laughs> right? So I have one of our projects here. Let me pull it to the center. This is our garden, our garden fairy in, our, in the garden series, and Jen made this one. This was Jen's design. And this laddering project with kind of the Bollywood kind of outer, you know, the macrame with the beads on the outside, and then here's some laddering with you know what my favorite bead is, the shadow right here, okay? So with these guys, you can see um, that she used regular um, Ceylon. But if I bring over this Chinese knotting cord, you can see I could do, I could have done that same thing with Chinese knotting cord, right? Might have a little bit of a different flair or feel to it, but it would work just the same. It would really work uh, in a similar manner. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the color for this one and how I might change the mood of this piece by adding color. I'm going to move the Garden Fairy piece there, and I'm going to get this little piece of white paper here. We'll put, we'll put it, put our friend right there. Now, color is really a very personal choice for your projects, right? You know, we, we can say a lot with color. I love Jen's color choices that she has here with this um, regular Ceylon, but let's take a look at maybe making a riff on that. Maybe you wanted your piece to be, I don't know, a little lighter. I've got, these are all from our regular Ceylon collection. I could just skew this very slightly. 
I could make that substitution for that teal. I could come in and maybe make this darker substitution for that coral. I'm going to slide that in. These unruly threads might be easier for you to see them that way. And then maybe I would keep this one that Jen did there. So can you guys see? I'm going to tighten it up so you guys can see that colorway. So you can, just by changing out this blue to maybe a lighter teal, darkening this up, still has kind of the same color feel, but this one might look a little more vintage, right? Because the colors might be a little more dusty rather than a little more, oh my gosh, look at how vibrant. those colors pop, or vibrant, exactly. We could even go a little more vintagey by throwing in that kind of green. And then that looks like your book. <laughs> it does. Oh my gosh, I'm on a Tony Duquette kick. Then I can throw this. There we go. I could do that. So you can see how just a little bit of nuance will help you um, change the color story completely. I've pulled in also, I just grabbed some other colors. Let's see other colors that might work with this. Look at that. That still has the same feel, but I've pulled in a little more, I'm going towards the purple rather than the coral. I can really go into the purple, right, like this. Let's see, Ginger, you say brighter colors I see as youthful and darkers are more aged. You know, I don't know if I agree I, with I that. I agree with that. Yeah. But it's summer and so we're feeling yeah. brighter. Yeah, and, and I do think that we all have kind of our own kind of, we bring kind of our own color notions to the table. And maybe, you know, darker colors can be seen as more somber, and maybe older people can be seen as more somber. But, you know, I, I, I think that's kind of, um, you know, it's an interesting generalization for sure, but it also shows how we all bring kind of our own color um, ideas, mm -hmm. you know, to the table. Let me show you. Everyone yeah, it has a flavor that they enjoy. Yeah, no, for sure. And, yeah, totally. I'm going to throw in that maybe this is a summer um, version. version and maybe this is you know I don't know a winter version you know and it does Debbie it adds some depth to it I love this gray I love how this looks you know and it has um, but you're just kind of riffing off of different colors now I if Janice I don't know if you're watching <laughs> JP it's like one of Karen's favorite pencils. I love this. We have some vibrant colors. She uses it in the um, in, Bahama Mama. Yeah, in Bahama Mama. We have some vibrant colors in our regular Chinese knotting, or our um, regular Ceylon collection. Look at that. That pop of, what's this color called? I think that's poinsettia. Poinsettia. Super, super vibrant. And maybe, you know, I love the interplay between light and dark, this light and dark. Um, I, you know, and I would never pull this for myself, but I love this mix. I love the way it looks. I think it's pretty cool. You can also, I don't know, we could, let me get one more. I was looking at this. That's also kind of an interesting colorway. Now we're really departing from Jen's original, <laughs> right? But um, but I think uh, I think it's kind of a cool mix. Let's look again. I want to show you. I want to do this one more time. I'm going to push those to the side. Do you want to see that? All right, Patrice. We'll see you next week. I'm going to get to that in just a second. I'm going to do this real quick with Tiger Lily. Tiger Lily is also from our In the Garden series. But I wanted to show you that this was a pretty um, monochromatic palette. Can you see that? Pretty monochromatic. I pulled in, and it's kind of some oranges and this kind of pretty beige. I pulled in this red. I pulled in kind of like this. Let's start with that orange. There's that orange. Metal beads manufactured in Rhode Island. These are my Yuki, I believe. These are metal seed beads, metal my, my Yuki's, I think. These all are. And, you know, we could pull something like that in. Let me just pull them in a little bit. There we go. You guys can see that. So, you know, your piece, if you're going for monochromatic, you don't necessarily have to be dull, right? That little pop of red 
in there is kind of interesting. What happens when I add Karen's um, favorite poinsettia? That's even not too bad of a color palette, right? I don't know. It's kind of cool. I'm not afraid. That little pop. I've also pulled in, I've done some um, other thread palettes. <clears throat> Let's pull these in, because I wanted to share these with you guys. And I wanted to show you, let me get this real nice and big. I don't know if you guys can see. Maybe if I held it up like this. Sorry, I'm really getting, <sighs> get even higher. There we go. I like the looks of that one. There we are. Perfect. I've pulled in some kind of monochromatic palettes here. And can you see here on the bottom, this is kind of like a green, greenish palette. Um, this, I put in this total crazy neon yellow. Can you see that color I've used there? Karen made this amazing color palette the other day. It was sitting on her desk and she used a neon yellow. And with, what, grays, with the grays. And so I pulled the color palette, that gray <clears throat> color palette that she was kind of using. Now watch what happens when I throw in, whoops, let me get this over here. When I throw in that pop of neon yellow. Oh my God, isn't that amazing? I also threw in, and it's really modern. This guy, this is our fluorescent hot pink. Look at that. Isn't that so interesting? And that would be like your running pop of color mm -hmm. through things. But I thought that these palettes that I did here, these kind of pink to green palettes, and I'll get the camera over so you guys can see that. Going from fluorescent hot pink to light magenta, Chinese coral, cerise, to this, well, no, this is light magenta. So what's this one? That's... Oh, fluorescent hot pink. I don't know what the... Oh, light orchid, I think, is mm. this one. Chinese coral, cerise, and light magenta. Then I go into this green palette. I've got uh, this golden olive, antique gold, the lemongrass, chartreuse, and this neon yellow. So I think it's kind of an interesting way to um, go beyond just some ordinary colors. Try throwing in a neon. Try, try throwing in like a bright pop of color. And I think you'll really, really be surprised about the color story. You can see just even over there, whoops, there goes our my thing. I want to show you guys just sitting over there. Oh, it's a little bit of an earthquake. There we go. <laughs> can you guys see that? Pull it up. There we go. Um, you can see right there how all of these, just pushing them aside, how they all just kind of mixed. This this poinsettia, it's kind of my new go-to today. <laughs> look at how cool that looks, and look at how cool it even looks with this red. We're kind of building that bridge. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting color story. Um, there was a question that popped up on the screen where you guys asked, uh, is there a color chart? You know, you can shop all of our products by color, and if you go on our front page, if you go to color collection, you'll see a lot of things that are grouped by color there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wanted to show you, let's pull uh, the loomed piece over. This will oh, so illustrate. Had, um, mm -hmm. a question way earlier in the bar. have to show both of our pieces side by side. Oh, sure. Yeah, we'll do that at the very end. Let me show you guys um, Eslon and regular Ceylon the same weight. No, Eslon, Jessica, is the one that we carry, the Eslon. It's uh, comparable to the Hana and to the um, Ko. Right. Yeah. Hand me those spools over there, would ya? Would ya? Would ya? So you guys, this is a little sneak peek on a piece that I'm working on with um, using this with the jewel loom. And this is when I'll get it kind of close up to the camera so you can see it. I am looming completely with um, Ceylon. This I think is actually um, fine Ceylon here, not micro. Mm. And I think that this is the regular Ceylon right here. Or is that micro? I think this is fine. I think you're right. Yeah, I think yeah. this is fine. And what I'm doing is, yes, Gita, we miss you. Where is Gita today? I don't know, but another 
Free Tip Friday. I think last week she was Yeah, here. you know, she's we miss her when she's not here, our Gita from Denmark. Um, so you can see here I've used the thread and I've just woven it in and out of the warp to act as, as a design element in, I love it. in this piece. Thanks. It's something I'm I still fleshing so out. Much. But it kind of feels like kind of a magic carpet is feels like what I feel this like. Nomadic, tribal y. Yeah. Because well, my significant other is Turkish. <laughs> yeah. So it's very Turkish. Yeah. I love that kind of look. And so I wanted to show you some different threads that, if I'd used different threads, these are all again in regular um, Ceylon. But I could have used, look what that, mm -hmm. look what that olive does to it. That's, that, you know, really, I think, brings kind of a more monochromatic palette to it. I could, if I like this burgundy, but maybe I wanted to lighten it up, make it not so heavy. This color looks kind of amazing. This kind of, I don't know if this is our copper rose. Our copper, copper rose, one of my favorites. We had a question about the colors and thread sizes. We just know Yeah, it we just know them. And what blood. I'm going to do, you guys, is I'm going to take, take a few snaps when we're done, and I usually follow up Free Tip Friday with a blog post, mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll link all of these in the blog post. I even like this Montana blue. Well, it's not really Montana, but um, I think it's our indigo, maybe? Mm -mm. I'm not sure what color this no. is. I'll check it, Gracie. I'll link them. Oh. Um, there's so many colors, you guys. You can even go a little bit lighter to lighten it up, this beigey color, and then finally, for a super monochromatic palette, you could kind of have this golden brown. So it really just depends on what works for you. But thread really, really changes the mood um, of your piece. Denim. Debbie says it's denim. Was it denim? Periwinkle. Oh, it's periwinkle. This one? Mm -hmm. Periwinkle. One of my well, favorite in colors. In our collection. It's, our collection. it's called periwinkle. So, you know, don't be afraid to let your threads come forward um, and be forward in your design. This one, I'll have this up someday, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> We're working on so many projects. But I really wanted to show you, and you can see I've just woven it here a little bit more so you can see how that, how it goes. I've just woven it in and out. Well, I hope that clears up. Yeah, you grab your piece, I'll grab my piece. I hope that helps. I don't know. It may have muddied the waters a little bit more. Um, Lynn, you go to our blog, and I'll post it on our Facebook page, but our blog is called The Bead Table, and you can see it um, uh, if you go to the front page of our website and scroll down to the bottom, you can see where it says you can click over to the blog, or if you just Google Bead Shop The Bead Table, that'll come up as well. So here's Gracie's piece. I'll pull that down. Here's my piece right here, side by side. Maybe I'll do it. Is yeah. that a better view? You can see there's Gracie used that leather. My scraps of leather collection. Yeah, scraps of leather by Grace Noland. <laughs> see, but you can see, I mean, thread, you know, it really uh, enhances, enhances the piece. So don't be afraid to explore the many, many moods of thread. Now I'll show you what a big old mess our table looks like over here. <laughs> our many moods of thread are just all together in the uh, in a big pile, but we'll make sense. We'll make sense of this for sure. So you guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed our uh, fun little broadcast on thread. Just to uh, surmise, the beading weaver thingy thing. I, how am I using it? Well, it's the jewel loom. And you can jewel loom this. Lynn, go look at our project called uh, Debut. Our very, very, very first Facebook Live broadcast back in October, I talk a lot about the jewel loom. So um, uh, go to our uh, Facebook Live broadcast number one, um, and you'll see me work with the jewel loom there. Um, this is Carnelian. It's Carnelian it's right here. From childhood. Yeah, April from childhood. Really. Eight and millimeter. some of these are my personal pieces, yeah. so yeah, that's crystal. But those yeah. are our Robles. Yeah, um, Robles wood. Mm -hmm. You really use wood very effectively. Oh, I love you. it. And then these are our cranberry, mm -hmm. the 10, um, 10 millimeters. They have a nice big hole. Um, so you guys can find more thread information on our Stitchinary and in our Tricks to Laddering handout um, on in our projects. And yeah, give me a little bit, and I'll post uh, the blog post, and I'll have some 
um, color links and stuff here for thread. Um, but do let me know uh, if you use some thread, what you're doing this weekend. I always want to see what's going on. And next week, you guys, on Free Tip Friday, not Free Tip Friday, our regular Facebook Live broadcast on Wednesday, Grace and I are going to be doing some looming, and it's we're going to talk more about color um, and stuff like that. So it's going to be a really fun broadcast that we're gearing up for. <laughs> so what's the shiny in Gracie's necklace? That's some of Gracie's personal. Yeah. I'll pull it forward. That's, that's one of her personal beads right there. It is a right three-hole bead holding yeah. the stuff underneath it. Yeah, tiger, it is. Tiger's, yep. eye. tiger's eye three-hole bead. All right. All right, my dears, have a fantastic holiday weekend yes. if you're celebrating it in the U.S. And to our watchers all around the world, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. And, yes, and happy Canada Day. Oh, my gosh. Canada, you're you're celebrating your sesquicentennial. That's wow. 150 years. It's one wow. of my favorite words. Wow. I, I know. Didn't... That's right. You learn something new every day, Gracie. I do. All right, dear folks. We'll see you guys. Have a fantastic, wonderful weekend. Don't forget to open up those newsletters, you guys. We've got some crazy stuff going on this weekend um, uh, in our newsletters and on our website. So thanks again for watching. It's Kate Richburg out with Grace Nolan. We're out from beadshop.com. We'll see you on Wednesday.